So can I read your mind? I don't waste my time reading people's mind because it's... <laughs> I've... I don't read even my mind because it's a trash bin. Because what is in your mind? Do you have a choice what is in your mind? From your childhood, whatever you're exposed to, what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, everything is in your mind, isn't it? Your mind is society's garbage bin. You have no choice. If this person speaks, I will take it. If this person speaks, I will not take it. Do you have such a choice? If I abuse you, you will remember it much more than if I say nice things to you. Yes or no? Hello? So, it is a trash can, it gets everything. You can choose what to use and what not to use. That choice you have, if you are not in a reactive state. But you have no choice about what is in your mind, isn't it? Just everything that you've been exposed to is there in your mind. People who are busy spreading lies in the world talk about a pure mind. How can trash can be pure? How can a garbage bin be pure? If you remove half the brain, pure mind. Otherwise, everything that you gathered is there. The choice of what to use and what not to use, that is your choice. Hello? That differentiate you from each other. One person chooses the right things, another person randomly chooses whatever. So accordingly, your personalities get determined. But do you really have a choice what to contain in your mind? All the filth in the world is there in the mind, isn't it? You have no choice about what to hold in your mind. If you think I should not hold this, only that will stay. Right now as an experiment, all of you, just close your eyes, ten seconds, you should not think about a monkey, okay? No monkeys for ten seconds. Only monkeys, isn't it? So I'm saying you don't have a choice. Everything that's good and bad and nonsense, everything that's come your way is in your mind. You cannot choose. You cannot choose what to hold, you can only choose what to use. That choice also many people have lost. So don't talk about reading your mind, I don't want to walk through all that filth. Hello? I don't even go through my mind, <laughs> forget about yours. But the basic question is something else, it's just I picked on something on the side. I must tell you this, I have initiated more people in the world whom I have never met than people that I have met. I have met a few million people, but I have initiated many, many times more people who have never met. They have never seen me, they have never know anything about me. Just if they were in a moment of absolute willingness, we won't miss the chance. So, what absolute willingness means is, you are conscious and you have no will of your own, you are simply here. If you lay… if you are like that in Shimla, doesn't matter. You are Shimla or North Pole, it doesn't matter because consciousness has no distance. You are talking about being in the same room, this is only the problem of the body. Your body is there, my body is here. It's very clear, this is my body, that's your body. This is my mind, that's your mind, clear. Here and there it may overlap, we may agree a little bit. But this is my mind, that's your mind. Never have you found another person whose mind is exactly like yours, have you? So you thought when you were in love, but the moment you got married, you realized they have their own mind. So this is my mind, this is my body, that is your body, that is your mind. These things are right now, at least for now, distinctly separate. But I want you to understand, there is no such thing as my life and your life. You hold a little bit of the same thing, I hold a little bit of the same thing. It's like in Simla, you grew up in Simla? In Simla, do you blow soap bubbles when you were in school or something? You did. Suppose you and me, today we have a soap bubble competition. You and me going to blow soap bubbles. My bubble is this big, yours is this much. So I say, see, look at this, this big bubble is my bubble. 
book, it went. Then I don't say this is my air, that is your air. When the bubble is holding, this is my bubble, that's your bubble. Just like that. This is my body, that's your body. Right now. The moment it breaks, there is no such thing as my life and your life. It's one life. So, will you experience this or will you believe the nonsense that I'm speaking? This is the only question. If you experience it, after that, I don't have to tell you, be nice to the person who is sitting next to you, don't rob them, don't kill them, don't do this, don't do that, would you need it? Did anybody tell you this little finger is a helpless little finger, don't cut it, don't chop it, don't hammer it? Did anybody tell you? Why you're taking care of it? Because you experience this as a part of myself. If you experience all life as part of myself, then nothing would be needed, everywhere it's connected. So I'm saying in Simla or wherever you want, if you simply sit there, not as a man, not as a woman, not as a person, just as life, we are always waiting. You must do some inner engineering. How would you feel if a stranger comes in your bedroom without your permission? You would definitely feel bad. And if you are one of those who hasn't got control over his or her temper, then no one knows the fate of that poor stranger. So this is what happens when someone invades your privacy. You want to protect it at all cost, right? Then why on earth does one want to read someone else's mind? Because that also is an invasion of privacy. That also is an attack on your personal space. Do you want to enter someone else's bedroom without their permission? The very idea is scary, right? This is exactly like that. Nothing more, nothing less. Let me first tell you outright that mind reading has nothing to do with spirituality. Mind reading has nothing to do with your spiritual life. On the contrary, it's a great hindrance, it's a great obstacle on the spiritual path. And if you are a spiritual seeker, then you must be cautious about the dangers of mind reading. Allow me to share with you some points which talk about these dangers which are brought about by mind reading. Many people who are not aware of the true purpose of spirituality consider mind reading as a spiritual practice. That's really ridiculous to the core. True spirituality is not at all about reading people's mind. It's not about developing psychic powers. That is the sure shot recipe for your downfall. Mind reading is nothing but the ego's deepest desire to gain power and control. When someone practices mind reading, he or she is actually projecting his or her own thoughts and emotions on others which is the distortion of reality. And this is absolutely disastrous for a spiritual seeker. A spiritual seeker tries to develop the non-judgmental attitude not only towards people but also towards the whole creation. So when you are trying to read someone's mind, you are actually judging them, which doesn't at all befit a spiritual seeker. Mind reading creates suffering and it creates suffering not only for the mind reader but also for the person whose mind is being read. So you must respect people's privacy, you must respect their boundaries and if you are a spiritual seeker then you should work towards your own spiritual growth 
you should focus on your own inner journey rather than trying to control or manipulate others some people have this wrong idea that if you could read others mind they would be able to connect with them more do you really think so just a little common sense will tell you that this is absolutely not so true connection with people true connection with your family true connection with your partner can happen only from a place of love and understanding and that is your very nature you are the essence of love in human form but you are ignorant about it try to access it through your spiritual practices and you would then experience that eternal love out of which this temporary phenomenon of body mind complex has come so if you try to read people's mind you will remain stuck at the level of the mind so be more conscious be more aware so you can really connect with people psychic abilities can't help you in connecting with people these psychic powers would in fact make you more egotistic so beware all the spiritual masters have condemned these psychic powers and they have laid emphasis on spiritual growth through mind reading you can create negative karma how because in mind reading you are trying to control others in mind reading you are trying to gain power over others that will surely create karma and this will be harmful for your spiritual growth a true spiritual seeker has no interest in controlling others in fact he is trying to lose all control a spiritual seeker has no interest whatsoever in gaining power over others he is not on a power trip but the one who is interested in reading others mind surely is finally i want to say that mind reading is a great distraction for a spiritual seeker a spiritual seeker is one who is trying to go beyond the mind a spiritual seeker is one who is trying to transcend the mind and quite obviously with mind reading you are moving in the realm of the mind with this you will get trapped in this more and more so if you really want to progress on the spiritual path then stay away from such things stay away from people who engage in these things also i'm not denying the existence of psychic powers they do exist and any sincere spiritual seeker will have them some day i'm just trying to make you aware about the dangers of using them when they come just surrender them at the feet of your master surrender them at the altar of divine that way you will be really surrendering your ego and with this surrender of the ego you will move deeper within yourself with this surrender of the ego you will come closer to your real nature and some day with complete surrender of the ego you will discover your divine conscious infinite nature